Hey guys, welcome to the Cold North podcast. My name is Jacob Harris, and today I got a very special guest from the other side of the world. His name is Ben from Third Eye Visuals, who's done some amazing videos for some uh, pretty large bands that me and my friends listen to. Bands like Flies, Parkway, Drive, North Lane, and uh, Alpha Wolf, not to mention any. But yes, there it's a it's a quite a roster he's to work with. Um, we're gonna talk a bit about some really technical stuff I want to ask him about, but also like uh, things I want to talk to about, you know, uh, making uh, friends with bands and so forth. So uh, let's get into this without further ado. Ben from Third Eye Visuals. All right, hey Ben. Yeah, how you going? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Doing oh, well. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm stoked. Um, I've been watching a lot of your videos for a long time now with uh, my friend Andreas uh, on our reaction channel, and um, like we've been uh, we've been fans for quite a while. And uh, I just wanted to like uh, get into a lot of different subjects, but I wanted to know a bit more about you because there's not there's not really that much information about you online. So uh, could you give me like like the lowdown of how did you get started doing music videos and what inspired you to do that? Sure. So I think like a lot of photographers, uh, I used to be in a band and when the band kind of fell apart, uh, I still wanted to be a part of the industry. So I picked up a, a camera and started taking photos at local shows. And then naturally that just evolved from taking um, still images to doing our uh, video side of things. And, you know, just slowly over time, just picking up new skills and refining your craft and getting better and better. And then um, the Australian scene's, you know, been super healthy. So we have all these amazing bands where you can kind of grow with them. So it's it's been quite a natural progression going from like the stills and jumping over to the video that way. So it's been, yeah, it's pretty, pretty simple. Nothing too exciting. So you started with photography. Yeah, photography was my bread and butter. Um, I still love photography. Um, but yeah, videos, I guess you can do a lot more exciting things. You got 24 photos in a second, essentially. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's jump over that way. Did, uh, did any of the bands you took photos for, were the first ones you did video for as well? Or who start, did you start out making videos for? So it, I, I always started it out with like local bands. Mm -hmm. So no one big at all. And then of course, you know, we've got Parkway Drive who are like our, uh, biggest heavy band in the country and you know one of the biggest in the world um, so I took photos of Parkway um, took their kind of like big act and then heaps of local bands and just slowly over time doing lots of local bands and getting better and better at what you do but eventually you get to the point where yeah, you might work with an Alpha Wolf who release an awesome album and then you get to do a video on that album and that kind of gets more eyes on you they get more people going, hey, let's work with this guy. And yeah. It's all very natural, starting very small and just getting bigger and bigger over time slowly. So are you are you on your own or are you part like a, of a production company or something else? That I is just me. Yes. Yeah. Like I've I've always I used to spin, you know, all the plates. I used to do all the producing and mm. I did all the camera operating, did all the gaffer work, lighting and one man army. Yeah, and it was, it was just purely because there was no budget. Um, and I'm also just a curious person. I'm like, oh, how does this work? And then it's like I learned how to do 3D a bit. And then as you get bigger budgets and things get too busy for you, I, I bring in some really great crew with me now. So like the more recent videos that I've done, I've had a producer and I've had you know other people doing all the lighting for me. So it's been really helpful that way. So I can just kind of focus on the the visual aspects a lot more. That's so cool. So you're like, it seems like you know uh, each step. Yeah, you know, you know how to light, you know how to edit, you know how to like gaffer and put things up. So you can, you kind of have an idea of how things work. I guess that makes it easier when you get a team then that you know we can expect from people. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. So I kind of have my expectation of what needs to be met. And then I can kind of communicate how to achieve that um, without being unrealistic because uh, I can't understand where it's going to be really difficult for that person. I don't go, hey, make this happen and I expect magic. I kind of go, okay, I know that's going to be hard. How can I make it possible for everyone to synchronize and make it all work in smooth fashion? Yeah. 
So, so uh, one thing I noticed about a lot of your videos is you incorporate a lot of, I would not necessarily call it CGI, but it is CGI. I, you know, there's, there's some, I don't know if it's Blender or Unreal you work in, but there's some 3D stuff in there a lot. And it seems like it's a lot heavy editing in most of your videos. Do you feel like, uh, what what's kind of your role now? Do you feel mostly like a director or editor? Like what, what part of the whole progress do you feel like most comfortable in? Or is it just like uh, all of them? Like how, how is your progress generally? Maybe the question is better ask, I want to do a video with you. What's next? What do we, what do we do from here? I, I would call myself the director slash cinematographer. I guess I kind of dictate what's going to happen in the, the scope of everything as yeah. a director. But I'm very particular with how things are going to look aesthetically and how I'm going to make them look aesthetically with camera movement and lighting. And I'll kind of uh, direct those to people who will put the lights in place for me. But uh, I'm pretty hands-on in regards to how the aesthetic looks. And I'll do the editing just because I kind of already know how things should flow from A to B. Um, and typically the turnaround times are pretty quick. So being able to smash out an edit um, and then get the draft revisions back in the notes I have a lot more control that way. Whereas if it goes to someone else, they might they might not want to edit as much as they can, or the budget doesn't allow them to do as much editing as I'll, I'll probably put in myself. Um, but yeah, to, to simply put, I'd probably consider myself a director cinematographer these days. Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, how how much like uh, pre production do you make for your videos? Because a lot of them have some effects and things I would say like, okay, he needed to have planned this out. And there are other videos like, for example, the mirrors purple static video. Um, I just watched that and it feels like maybe it's like stock footage you've used primarily and then put some blender stuff in it. It looks like that way. And uh, there's also, but there's some green screen footage in it. And then there's like the other videos for like Alpha Wolf where it just feels like, okay, you got some footage. I don't know if you recorded yourself or you got it from the band and then you like mask edited it afterwards. It feels like there's like different, uh, and then there's like the Polaris videos, which has some really uh, intense uh, effects, which means that you need to like have pre-planned stuff. Like how do how do you uh, how do you differentiate this between each video or each like uh, assignment? Does my question make sense? Yeah, yeah. So look, it's firstly the purple static video. The reason that happened was because it was made during COVID. Exactly. It's okay. Then. So, ours. Like, well, let's. I can't film you guys. Let's get stock footage and old three D track whales and animals, yeah, whatever else, other cool thing. And then, and then we got the band to film themselves on it. Well, I got Patty, the singer, yeah, to film himself on a green screen. Uh, so that one, that one was kind of like totally random and just a bit of a hail mary, and it kind of worked out. It worked out well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cool. It's so different. And then with like Alpha Wolf and Polaris and that, I kind of, like, I simply just go, these are just going to be eye candy. They're just like cool to look at. Yeah. You know, not too much of a message to it. Um, And I, I'll play out maybe three or four key sequences and I'll go, okay, from A to B, this is kind of what I want to happen. And then everything from there, I just kind of massage in the place in the edit. Yeah. Um, And then... You know, for some other videos where like the band doesn't want the most difficult videos in all honesty are the bands that don't want anything that's CGI heavy mm -hmm. because um, you've got to really plan out like a story or from shot A to shot B. Um, you know, particularly this video I did for Die Artist Murder for called Kareds. Um and it was just like super intense, like having to plan three distinct sections. And then within those sections, there needs to be, you know, three sections again. There's a beginning, a middle, and end of each yeah. section. That is kind of uh, taxing to think about and to make it look good. Whereas the 3D stuff, you just kind of go, all right, cool. Like, let's have an airplane flying here. <laughs> and then there's a broken building and the camera flies. Like, that stuff's like, you can just go chuck it in and, yep, it looks cool. It's, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of, bit of planning and then a bit of like, hey, this idea has come to me. Two weeks after we finish filming, let's just try it out. Yeah. So how do you convey that to the bands? You know, because uh, I could imagine 
you talking to like our folks, yeah, then we're going to have like anime references. We're going to do like a lot of cuts uh, every second. And it's going to be a lot of uh, plugins. I'm going to use all these kind of things. Like, how do you, how do you uh, portray your ideas to the band before you, you shoot? In all honesty, they just trust me. Cool. Um, That's great. I, I, yeah, it is. It's really great, particularly when, like, I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm a visual person. And yeah. Me going, okay, so, Damien, you're going to be doing this, and then this is going to happen, and he's just like, just show me it. I'm like, all right, so yeah. big. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Like when we did uh, Akudama a few years ago, I sent them the first draft, and they were like, ah, oh, this doesn't look good. And they're stressing. I'm like, hey, just give me two more weeks, and you're going to like freak out. Trust me. And I give them, you know, after the draft and the uh, second one, they're like, oh my God, okay, yeah, we get it now. Just because there's so many bells and whistles. missing. It feels like a video that took a long while to make or like a lot of iterations because uh, like you can take three seconds out of that video and then you can like identify, okay, here's a reference to this. Here's this plugin he used. Here's this technique he used. And I just feel like, okay, wow, okay, it's like a massive, I want to call it visual overload of some sort. Yeah. But it kind of like, um, I think it kind of identifies your style a lot because even the mirror, the the purple, uh, the, the mirrors video, there's the ending where you're like kind of, you know, turn it up to 11 with the edit and the effects. So, and it's kind of pacing wise, that video is more like um, the mirrors video, like slow and then intense at the ending where the alpha move was more like, pedal to the metal all the way uh, and do you do you think about that before you do it or is that is that plan or is that as the edit progresses you'll feel like oh this is the beats this this is the what's going to happen here and here it's it's very much the vibe of the song so like you listen okay. to akudama and it's like it ramps up and it's just two and a half minutes of just crazy whammy guitars breakdown you know it's very the intensity is there from the start yeah of course it's like there's no ex there's no no excuse for you to hold back. You can just go, hey, here's the visual overload. And then I guess with mirrors, they've got such a nice, beautiful dynamic song. There's a lot of room for dynamics to breathe. And then, you know, you can build up to something or you can hold back a little bit and let and let the shots um play out a bit longer. As you said, like you look at Akudama and like every three seconds is just like twenty different things happening. Yeah. So uh, one thing I talk with other guys about is uh, being a musician that you can always tell in the edit that you know how to play music because you the way you edit to the beat of the music and also what what you like uh, focus on in it. And how do you think that has influenced your your editing style, like your your visual style now? Yeah, it's 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 interesting because like I guess it's so easy to edit to a beat, like it's just every four counts or every eight count you might change the shot. Whereas, like, I guess as a musician or being a fan of musicians and music itself, it's interesting, like, you learn about, like, polyrhythms and it's like, oh, okay, so maybe, like, for this next section, I could, like, halve the edit time and then mm. funnel into the next time. And then, you know, just finding interesting ways to make edits um, not uh, predictable. Uh, so it certainly influences me that way because it does become a bit repetitive when you go, okay, the songs, you know, 150 yeah. BPM and you go, there's a cut every eight beats. It's kind of boring and predictable. It's like I can mix it up. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't like, uh, feels too static. Um, I think that's kind of a nice way of also thinking about it. It is, it's breathing and it's dynamic in the edit with the, with the music as well. Um, so uh, one thing I also noticed is a lot of your edits, you got like the first 10 seconds, which are like really intense, even though it's like a slower pace afterwards. Is that something deliberate, like in our day and age with the attention grabbing and, you know, attention, you know, retention at the beginning? Is that something you think about or is this like a a thing you do? Well, uh, I, I think it's probably a dynamic thing. I think okay. it's, it's nothing to do with the, atten the attention span of people because i think it's i just i'm trying to think because i know at the start of purple static it's a bit of a montage thing i yeah. guess the kind of the idea is, is to set it sets the tone yeah yeah for, um, what's what's to come it's like hey here's 10 different shots in like you know two seconds and you might you know as a viewer you might pick up oh there was a there was an eye there was a 
a whale or crocodile, whatever. Um, and it kind of catches your attention a bit that way and gives you a bit of a bite-sized taste for what's to come, maybe. Yeah, that makes total sense. So it's it's more like of setting the mood than anything else. And I think there's like a, a one cool thing is like it's just like when you when music, if you if you see something and then you expect it and then you get the acknowledgement of it later on, it gives like a satisfying feel to it. And I think kind of that maybe plays into yeah. it as well. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. I try my best. Not, <laughs> I try my best to think I'm hitting those marks. Uh, a lot of the time, it might just accidentally fall into place just from my natural kind of uh, vibe of the edit. That's great. So, how how much do you like collaborate with the uh, with the bands you work with uh, in regards to like the ideas and the concepts? Is it like mostly you that pitch, or do you work it together? How how do you prefer to do it? Um, the way I prefer to do it is I would love to get a little bit of an idea of what they want, just so I have a little bit of uh, guidance. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I'd love to, I would love to them to go, hey. This song's about, I don't know, this, this song's about this. Like maybe it's like, a t oh, it's about love or it's about money or whatever. And then I can go off and go, hey, well, I can do all these crazy ideas and this is what I'll be super passionate about. Yeah. Um, whereas sometimes a band, a band will come to me and they will go, we really want to do this. And I'll be like, yeah, sounds good. But I might just not be super passionate about it because mm. it just doesn't come from my my heart and my mind. Um, so I won't put in, I won't be able to put in like an extra 10% of effort because I just know, I don't know what's around the corner of the idea. But like, for example, when I'm doing Akudama, and you go, yeah, a lot of time is spent on the edit. It's like, yeah, because I can kind of understand what the next idea is around the corner a bit because it's like 100% my idea. Yeah. But it's someone else's idea. I don't know what around the corner is going to look like. I don't know if they're going to be angry or upset with that idea or they're just content with what they've got. So finding that passion and um, that little bit of extra effort can be difficult if you kind of put into a box of an idea. That makes total sense. I could imagine um, when something is passionate for you, you would also be more willing to do that like extra 10, 20% in the edit, which I feel like a lot of your videos are, because I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, I know the workload behind some of this stuff. And like, Jesus Christ, this must have taken weeks to do. And like for simple stuff, um, which pe may many people may not consider uh, when they're rushing it, hey, it looks cool, but like there's, there's quite a few steps, even just the step of, learning to do 3D and like for example there's the North Dane video for Carbonized um, where you do like I think it's like a death map and then do like a scan afterwards I did you film that before and then did that after or was it all in uh, in digital made it, uh, in Blender or what uh, so we Carbonized I 3D scanned the house oh you, oh, you 3D scanned it so so I went in there and took like a thousand photos and, you know, read, 3D recreated. So when you watch the start of Harvard, oh, okay. it flies through the building. Yeah. That's obviously like the 3D. And then I've done like a scanny effect and just rendered that out as its own layer and, you know, put it on screen mode or whatever and made it to a very matrix. -y. Yeah. Yeah. Did did that matrix, whole matrix vibe, was that the, was that your idea? Yeah, it was, it was, um, so carbonized happened like super last minute i think we had two weeks to film it um and they kind of had a rough idea of a ray i was like i'm trying to remember the specifics but essentially i just said let's just copy the rave that neo goes to in um the first matrix because i love the matrix and then like you know uh you may have seen it online but i've done like hey i totally stole this shot of like yeah fucking left to right and uh, classic, I'm like, and like people dress up in like all the you know the gothic gear and latex and that. Um, yeah, and I was like, yeah, I mean, it's fun, it's fucking sick. Like you get to make your own little matrix. That's that's, that's I think one of the reasons why I like your videos so much is because all the reference you make are like some of my favorite things. I have a 
you can't see it here, but I have a poster up here of the Akira movie, uh, which is like a, one of my favorite movies of all time or animes. And um, I also recently, just this weekend, randomly just completed the Pokemon uh, Red uh, game because <laughs> I found an, 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 an emulator on my phone, which I could play the whole thing. I was like, okay, uh, after the kids were put to bed, I was just like playing for hours. And then I, then I saw like the Apple video, I was like, Ah, this can't be happening. There's like all the things I like. And then, you know, also The Matrix is one of my favorite movies. I remember like biking in my hometown in the 2000, I think it was, just trying to find a store that had the VHS tape so I could watch it again. I guess I only saw it one time in the movie theaters. So it's like there's all this like, kind of nostalgic trip when I watch your movies. I don't know, I your movies. But yeah, it's kind of like mini movies, your music videos. Because I feel, feel it's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, that that's cool. And then you do it, as you say, you take one small part of that thing, which means a lot to me, and then you like make a whole video out of it. So, like, instantly, I'm like, really, this this, this I like. But I really think that the way uh, you can do it now compared to back then, that you as a one-man army can do it, like, make it look like a Matrix and the Matrix movie. And you did it cleverly because... The way you did like the those laser things, the 3D pass, but you did also like the, the green laser behind them in the performance setting. And then of course, all those things with the, as you, as you say, the ray pilot stuff. That was just great. Yeah, it's it's insane, isn't it? Like one one person can do that. And it's kind of scary, isn't it? I mean, you think, I mean, you, I'm like watching the BTS of how they made the Matrix. So yeah. Yeah, we have all these like full crazy teams of people like, shit it's just going to be me doing it in a minute <laughs> <laughs> but you, you pulled it off completely uh there's like an effect in that video that also i think it's kind of your signature was like pixel sorting oh yeah yeah it's as funny though like pixel sorting is like a really old effect to me yeah um, i know i i just seen it on so many videos and it's like a super easy effect to go to if you need to make something look glitchy and yeah exactly whatever <laughs> But it kind of, it kind of. Oh, yeah, I use that in a lot of videos. Yeah, but but it's a, it, it's the way of making like a signature style as a visual director, right? And you have like this is this is the things I do that makes this work. Um, I think one of the other things maybe do you know what brutalism is? Um, like brutalism, the architecture. Yeah, it's kind of a design architecture, but I've seen also that uh, for artwork, it's kind of you know I trying to fit things together that doesn't necessarily fit together so you got like uh the alpha wolf videos are a good example of that where it's like all different kind of styles that are blended and it, i i think it's called brutalism in architecture where it's, it's it might be ugly but it actually it's cool at the same time because i feel like a lot of your effects like some of them are like really well made and then others are like uh ugly in like you know quotations mark sense you know but when you fit it together and it's the dynamic sense, it just has this unique kind of style. And I think that's that's cool uh, that you've got, like, you've got this style where everything is kind of random, but it fits together really well. Is that something that's just, uh, is that something you develop actively or does this come naturally for, to you to do that kind of thing? Definitely naturally. I just, any, any videos that I'm super proud of or like, uh, I get, I, I love doing. It's just purely because I wanted to make something that looks cool. Um, there was, you know, there's the base layer and the base idea, which might be like, okay, this video is just make as much cool things as you can in the two minutes, or it might be like, hey, we're making a matrix, right? It's just I just wanted it to look cool. It's yeah. as simple as that. Um, and you know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but it's. It, it always comes from the core idea. It's like, does this look cool to me? Yeah. Yes or no. Um, and it goes back to what I said before. It's like, I know what the idea around the corner might be because I kind of had that gut feeling. So like, you know, because uh, you know when you're satisfied, like this, this is what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and like, uh, you can't always, you can't always land on that spot, but you can probably get like 90% there sometimes. Yeah. So like is that like when when do you know like an edit is finished to you as is like okay because I can imagine like you can go deeper and deeper and deeper like when when do you stop yourself or is that hard to do? Oh, the edit's due when the band needs the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, otherwise I'll just be sitting there like chipping. So the the best thing about uh, doing Akadama, for example, was and um, purple static in a way was. 
it was all during COVID. So like we filmed February, 2020, Bakudawa. And then that video didn't come out till like, I think July. So what's that? Like four months later. So I had four months to edit two and a half minutes. So I'd just spend like, you know, two or three days on 10 seconds of footage and then just do like 10 or 20 different iterations of it until I was really happy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. But like, I love that. Yeah. It was really fun. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think that that is, you know, it's um, having the time to do that. Because I think if you had like two weeks, it wouldn't be the same video. So it's kind of fun that it's the whole, you know, it's the framework around it that kind of made the, the final product. Uh, like it's your it's your restrictions as an as a as a video director, and I don't think a lot of people know that that you work around a lot of restrictions because uh, you have a budget, you have people you need to hire, you have time uh, timeline a deadline for the band, and then then maybe a label has some feedback or the band has some feedback, and all those things can like uh, really really impact the final product from beginning to end, from what you maybe imagined to to what was the actual video. Yeah, I, absolutely. And I say to, you know, I, when I talk to a lot of like my other creative friends and they're kind of stressing out about, ah, you know, our original idea didn't work out to what the finished product was or whatever, you know, there's three different lives to an idea. It's like you got your pre-production idea yeah. and then you get on set. And then when you're on set, everything changes again. And then you got the post-production and then the edit will kind of dictate the the pacing and the meaning so there's like three different ways that this idea will shift and change drastically and once i kind of came to terms of that when i walk onto set and something doesn't work out i don't freak out okay yeah. let's go all right okay like how's it gonna mold the idea that's that's a great experience to have i remember being like stressed really stressed out when that happens to me in the beginning yeah, oh yeah, all the time for me. It's only in the last like two or three years I've just kind of learned to roll with the punches, as they say. I th I think maybe also doing a lot of green screen work or stuff like that. It's kind of you you gotta you gotta trust the process that when you get into the to the box afterwards, that the product or whatever you filmed worked. Have you tried like where you're like, oh shit, this was not turned out the way I wanted it. Uh, I need to go in a completely different direction. Did you try that before? Oh yeah, yeah, plenty of times. Plenty, right. plenty. Yeah, there's, you know, there's, there's so many videos that I've done where I've had a roll of the dice, had a had a risk, and it's, you know, I've learned a lot, which is the best part about it. But yeah. at the end, I'm kind of like, yeah, that wasn't exactly what I wanted to achieve visually with it. But I, I think I feel that that's that's the way to push yourself. Uh... You need to like try things you don't really necessarily are comfortable doing in order to like, okay, take it to the next level of doing whatever technique you're using when you do like so technique editing heavy stuff as you do. Yeah, ab yeah absolutely. And, you know, there's that classic, you know, are you afraid to fail? Yeah. And I've failed plenty of times. <laughs> So I wanted to just touch on uh, growing up with bands because um, it feels like you have some bands that you work along with uh, on quite a few projects. So can you describe a bit that mm, that process of being friend with band and growing up and, you know, making art together? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like the, probably the guys in Alpha Wolf, I've known the longest out of all the bands personally. So I've got photos of them when I first started photography in 2014 back when they were like a completely different band so i've got photos of them playing to like five people in the middle of like nowhere um and then you know they they've evolved i've evolved and now i got to the stage where we cross paths again and it's like hey make a video for us or come on tour with us so that's really cool and then i've i've been as i said parkway drive i've been a fan of parkway drive since 20 no, 2006, wow. like when Horizons first came out. Um, because, you know, they lived two hours down the road in Byron Bay and they were just like the biggest thing ever in the show in heavy music. And I've known them for ages. And then I got my opportunity to photograph them and then I got an opportunity to work with them and tour with them. And, you know, I've always helped them out where I can. And then again, like other bands like Die Artist Murder, like I've known that band forever. And then they release hate. Hate is amazing. So it's it's been such a healthy, small 
uh, a small pond in Australia for heavy music, so everyone kind of knows each other. And if you have the opportunity to showcase your skills and then help that band out, um, you know, a lot of other bands hit you up and it's just this, uh, you all kind of rise together in a way. That's great to hear. It's, uh, so it seems like the whole scene down there is pretty tight knit. Yeah, everyone knows each other and um, everyone kind of, I guess, everyone's like very supportive. Like they will every you'll go to a show and you'll go see Polaris and then all the mm. North Lane's there, even though oh. it's North Lane from Melbourne, then it'll be a Melbourne show and they'll be checking Polaris out and you know, it's it's great in that regard and everyone can catch up and go, Hey, what are you up to? Or like, let's get you on for this project. Yeah. And you know, going over going over to America um soon with Alpha Wolf and Parkway Drive and it's like Are you going to tour with them? Yeah, yeah. So I head over with them and um, a little bit and sick there'll be you know Parkway Drive Amity Affliction North Lane and Make Them Suffer wow bands on one tour in, in America and it's like that's that's just kind of a statement for where Australian heavy music's at at the moment which is sick that sounds like a great package yeah it should be fun all the, yeah all the and craziness. so do so do you do like touring next to your video work as well is that like a, a normal part of your your work life yeah it is because that's kind of what i started on i was like a touring guy it was okay like uh, videos videos just have to come along with touring and it's like you got to capture the you got to capture the tour oh that's a great so, way of uh, starting yeah and so i i know how to tour and do the tour content and you know the photos at the end of the night and a little recap video and then obviously everything's evolved now to be TikTok and reels but um yeah touring i love it it's my it's my favorite part of my job probably because i get to hang out with my mates and that's uh, when you're on a music video set it's like all right go 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 yeah yeah i'll I'll see you in two weeks' time for the first draft or whatever. And just where it's like, all right, cool, that'll be a good show. Let's let's go get some dinner and I'll edit the photos later on. Yeah, that seems like a good time. Yeah, it's really fun, man. Over, overseas is really good. In Australia, it's a bit hectic because you got to fly everywhere. Yeah, so you finish you finish the show at midnight and then you get a plane at like six a.m. or something. So yeah, everyone's really tired all the time. So are you sitting like during travels and doing like pre-production and concept and uh, all the administrative administrative work? Uh, on tour? Yeah. Yeah, like on on tour. So a year ago when there was a Polaris headline show with Alpha Wolf was the main support and, and mirrors were on it as well. Um, I was working for all three of those bands and then Alpha Wolf needed two music videos for their release. So we're in the middle of tour planning a music video out and we literally shot a music video um, on tour. We had one day off and um, we shot that. That was for 60 centimeters of steel. Withholding Absence? So, yeah, so um, Lucas was there because Holding Absence was in, in Sydney. That's oh, that's clever. Off. Wow, it was bloody tough as well. Yeah, I can imagine Get to, I didn't get to scout the venue and I had to come up with a story that involved Lucas and Katana and I'm like what the hell am I going to do this and I'm in the middle of a tour what that's intense well you did a good job uh, what I liked about that video was like the way you uh, portrayed the two scenes with the color grading so they got the blue and the orange scene and the way you know symbol like a simple storyline with the delivering the Katana and then him you know <laughs> what, what, is, what, is, what do you call it you know uh, in, uh, ending himself with a, yeah, what is it called? What's it called? It's a Japanese term. Japanese word, seppuku. Yeah, But this is uh, what I like about it is this is just a simple story now that worked, but you paced it so well. Yeah, I loved it. Thank you. Um, yeah, I we were without babbling on too much about it. It's like yeah, I'm just like I need to do two basic things. I was just like teal and orange or blue and orange. Yeah, and um. And then I was like, and then this happens and this happens and this happens at the end. And then we were just like, yeah, let's just go for it. <laughs> it was not too, not too. That's great. That's the great that they were just like, yeah, we're going to do it and up to you. 
put, put your idea through. Hotel Underground was the same. It's like we had two yeah. weeks to do Hotel Underground, and uh, that was a fun and stressful one. Ah, that's an, but it, I like how uh, how fast you need to work in that environment. But it, it feels also good that when you're on tour and you have these kind of low down settings where it's maybe not that high stressful, you can get a bit more of a sense of what works. Maybe that's why, of like a sense of the band and what they like. So maybe that is why they trust you so much because you're hanging around them all the time. Yeah, that's a good point. And uh, that has crossed my mind before. Uh, you know, just knowing them as people and not trying to be a fan or not trying to be, trying to make them something they're not. Mm. I don't understand the vibe of like who they are or where they might want to go with their artwork. So, and that's definitely a good point, like knowing them in that regard. I, I, I also think it's like you, they, they trust their music, their art with you and your art. So uh, it takes a lot of, you know, trust between the two parties to do that. Yeah, yeah. Any Anything creative and, you know, as I said, you know, you don't always land on the right. You don't, you know, there's the three different lives to yeah. the idea. And um, hopefully at the end, they, they love it and hopefully it makes them a better band. I think you're doing a great job portraying uh, the music all the bands all the all the videos i've seen from you have I've been like holy shit afterwards like this was intense either in a sense of dynamic editing or like uh, the way you did the uh, incorporate cgi and effects in it and uh, i'm a huge fan and so is andreas uh, my partner who's touring the u.s right now which is why he's not here um but i wanted to thank you so much ben for hanging out with me for the past 30 minutes it was just such a pleasure talking to you and get uh, get the sense of who you are and how you approach things Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on. Of course. And uh, I'll see you guys later in the next episode. Thank you for listening and watching.